So example two, lead poisoning. Out of 25 million US children aged 1 to 5 years, there are about half a million children with blood levels of lead above the CDC's safe level of 5 micrograms per deciliter. What percentage of US children have lead poisoning? Right. So half a million is what percent of 25 million. Can you figure that out? So what percent is that? So half million as a decimal. What's half as a decimal? It's 0 0.5, right? So don't we just do 0 0.5 million over uh, 25 million, right? And of course the millions would cross cancel. That's 0 0.5 over 25, which is 0 0.02. And what's that as a percentage? Because we want to look at the average percentage rate. It is 2%. Okay, so that's the mean, and our P is 2. Okay? P is the percentage uh, mean, let's say. So the central limit theorem tells us that the percentages of lead poisoning sufferers in random samples of 400 children are approximately normally distributed. Find the mean and standard deviation of this normal distribution, then sketch a graph. What is the mean equal to? So the mean is what? The mean of... If you took a sample of 400 children, okay, and then took another sample of 400 children, uh, you know, figure out how many of them have lead poisoning, then took another sample of 400 children, another sample of 400 children. If you keep taking samples of 400 children, the average amount that would have uh, lead poisoning would be the same as the population. It would be 2%, right? 2% or 2, right? The standard deviation would be plug it into the formula uh, P times 100 minus P over N right root of that so P is 2 100 minus P 98 over N 400 okay the, si the sample size is 400 so that's root of 2 times 98 over 200 over 400 rather and we get 0.7 okay so um, the point is what the central limit theorem tells us it does a lot of work for us it tells us that if we continually drew random samples of 400 children from the population here's 400 children Here's another 400 children. Here's another 400 children. Every time you draw 400 children, you calculate how many of them have lead poisoning. So randomly pick 400 children from the US population, count how many have lead poisoning, get the percentage, plot it on a graph. Uh, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. Keep drawing 400 samples of 400 children. And eventually you would find that most of them would line up here and here and here and just slightly to here and here and this mean of course would be 2 because on average your samples of two of, four, of 400 children would be around 2% um, their, their, their um, lead poisoning rate would be around 2% same as the, the population because that's what you're drawing the random samples from right from the population now um, one standard deviation from the mean is 0 0.7. So if we go one standard deviation away, two, we're at 2.7. If you go one standard deviation below, what do you have? 2 minus 0.7 is 1.3. So one standard deviation below, we've got 1.3% um, of the kids have lead poisoning. If we go up two standard deviations, Okay, you get into this this group here, and uh, so up two standard deviations from the mean, you would add another 0.7, okay, and that would be 
3.4, right? If you if you go down one standard or down two standard deviations from the mean, you would be at uh, 0.6. So, what I'm trying to say is, what we're trying to say is that if you picked 400 children randomly from the population you should expect to get uh, and take their lead poisoning rate you should expect their lead poisoning rate to be between 0 0.6 and 3.4 percent okay because 95 percent of the data is going to be within two standard deviations of the mean and the mean is two right and um, the mean rate is two percent so Statistically, 95% of random groups of size 400 would have lead poisoning rates between 0.6% and 3.4%. Okay, so anything above that, you would go, "Oh, that's a high rate." Anything below that, you go, "Oh, that's a really low rate. That's cool, right?" <laughs> so cool down here, scary up here, but in between. Uh, you know, you don't worry about it because the thing about it is, you're taking, you know, the population has a lead poison rate of two percent, right? You know that there's probably, you know, you're not going to get exactly if you pick 400 kids and get their uh, lead poisoning rate, it's probably not going to be exactly two percent. It's going to be around there somewhere, you know, uh, you, like the, you know, that the, there's there's variation in life. There's, you know, you're going to get a little bit of variation. But it should not. You most ninety-five percent of the time, based just based on probability, on statistically, your variation should not be further than zero point six or three point four. Should be in between zero point six and three point four percent. Okay. So less than zero point six percent, you say, "Oh, that's really cool." These children in this village don't have hardly any lead poisoning. I wonder why this must be great. I w let let's figure out why. If you get more than three point four percent lead poisoning in in a particular town, then it's like, uh oh, I wonder what's going on here because this is significantly different than the rest of the population. Okay, uh, prob probability wise or statistically. So anyway, let, so let's try and answer this question. How unusual would it be to find a town with 10 out of 400 children aged 1 to 5 years suffering from lead blood poisoning? See if you can do that. Well, you might want to convert it to a percentage to begin with, because we're looking at the mean as a percentage, you know, 2%. Okay, so what is 10 out of 400 as a percent? 10 out of 400 equals... 1 over 40 or 0 0.025 or what's that as a percentage so you convert that to a percent right 2.5 percent right now where does this lie on our in our normal distribution graph here is that outside the norm or is it within the norm, let's say? Is it usual or is that unusual? Because 95% of the data, this is the usual amount, right? Between 0 0.6 and 3.4. Where does 2.5 lie? Well, that's right here, isn't it? 2.5. So that's fine. That's, that's, you'd expect that. That's not unusual. I mean, that you know, those 400 kids are they're kind of a random randomly picked sample doesn't show that uh, you know that that that's not um, that that's not outside the national norm at all nationally you would expect uh, a, a random group of 400 kids to have between 0 0.6 and 3.4 just from the natural kind of law of variation you know everybody's different so but you wouldn't expect that there's something you know causing their Slightly, they they have a lead poison amount slightly larger than the mean, but you wouldn't you wouldn't suspect there's anything particularly wrong with the water, or the air, or the dust, or whatever, right? In that town. But if we were to take the town of Kellogg, Idaho, and this is real life stuff here, 
Some citizens are concerned that 56 children out of 400 aged 1 to 5 years suffer from lead blood poisoning. What percentage of these children have lead blood poisoning? Can you figure that out? 56 out of 400, what does that give you? <coughs> so 56 over 400 is what? Zero point one four, which is what's that as a percentage? That is fourteen percent. Oh, my goodness, right? So, fourteen percent is the answer there. The percentage of these kids have lead blood poisoning. Now, now, you see, that without a little bit of statistics to back you up you might be in trouble in the real world because because you know the mining companies that don't want to clean up the mess they've made in Kellogg Idaho are going to come along and say hey yo, that's not that big of a deal only 14 percent I mean we got 86 percent of kids don't have lead poisoning problems so what are you complaining about right um, and so you know uh, again apparently the Bunker Hill Mining Company treats these concerns about lead poisoning for example as a public relations problem and downplays concerns about serious health or environmental risks okay and you can read up about it if you want to you don't need to so any case does this small sample show that there is an unusually high percentage of Kellogg children with lead blood poisoning yes or no and why so the question there is you see the mining company could say hey Okay, I gr we agree 14% is more than 2%, but, you know, that could be by chance. I mean, you only we've only got 400 kids here. That's a small sample that you could, could, you could pick. They, they'll say to you, what they could say to you is this. They could say, you know, you could randomly pick 400 kids in the country, and just by chance... They could have 14% lead poisoning too. So why are you telling us that 14% is a big deal? Now we know it's more than the average of two, but it could have just happened by chance. Why are you trying to say that there's something particularly different about these Kellogg kids and then trying to imply that has something to do with our minds? Do you see what I'm trying to say? So they're, of course they have to admit it's more than the national average, but they will then come back and argue that you know that could just happen that could randomly happen like any you could pick 400 kids out of the population 56 of them or more could could have uh, lead poisoning you know i mean it, it could happen by chance couldn't it and the answer to that is absolutely not you're absolutely correct 14% is a massively uh big uh it's, it's really unlikely to pick uh 400 kids and 56 of them have lead poisoning and this is the reason because so and uh, does the sample show there's an unusually high percentage of Kellogg children with lead blood poisoning yes it does because 14 doesn't even come under the curve of our normal curve 14 you see is way 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 out over here on the normal curve way out over here somewhere um, and if we take the standard deviation, you see the standard deviation is 0 0.7, remember that? Our standard deviation was 0 0.7. And, um, and 14 minus 2, you see, is 12. And 12 divided by 0 0.7 will give you the z-score. Okay. 12 divided by 0 0.7, that's the z-score, and that's about 17. So we're talking that, we're saying that how many 0 0.7s are in 12? You see, 14 is 12 more than 2, that's 12% more than 2, and divide by 0 0.7, you get the number of standard deviations it is away from the mean. We have 17, we're 17 standard deviations from the mean. We have a z-score of 17 about. When you look up your tables in your book, or whatever you got your z-scores, that doesn't even 
That's not even there. That's so unlikely. It's not even listed. The highest C score you're going to see is, you know, well, on this one, it's 2.7. I mean, the Z scores don't even go to 17. I mean, it's so unlikely. It's so far off the scale that that you're absolutely proving that there's something up with these kids because 2 is here. I mean, 14% is way out there. That's that's way. I mean, that's a theoretical, you know, thing. That's it's practically impossible uh, for 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 this to happen by chance, where you would pick uh, 400 children from the U.S. population and 56 of them or more would have lead poisoning. That's absolutely crazy. So, you know, the central limit theorem. This formula is really proven that there is definitely something up with the kids in Kellogg. There's, there's definitely a lead poisoning problem there.